God, everybody, and welcome to today's broadcast. I'm Apostle Craig Banks, and we are so glad that you joined us. Listen, uh, today we're going to be sharing a message with you, and it's called Changing the Game. It's something we uh, shared a, a little while back here at Canaan, but in changing the game, God wants you to understand how uh, his kingdom operates and what you are to be doing, not just settling for anything that goes, but being in position so that you can change things. The enemy is always trying to get over on the people of God, and it's because we have been playing his game. But God's game, as it were, is his kingdom agenda. And when we change things, we will change the game. The Lord even said, what should I liken this generation to? Children and sitting in the marketplace, playing. And so the church has been playing in the places where business should be, con uh, be uh, conducted. But God wants us to understand that he's causing us by his spirit to change those things. This will empower you, and this message will push you out of your comfort zone into the place that God wants you to be, and that is so that you can change the game. Let's go into this message. It will bless you tremendously. And I get up in the morning. I look down at the bed. There was a dark image of me. I went to school. All that stuff without your body. <laughs> they were equipping me to go to school. That ain't biblical, but then they give you an idea. Amen. So, again, to frame has everything to do with your potential. That's what God is after. Because your potential came from him. He gave you that. It's in seed form, and you got to be after it, okay? Now, Look down here. What prevents growth? I'm glad you asked. Ignorance of kingdom keys. Kingdom keys is not a ring with actual keys on it. Remember the Lord told Peter, he said, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom. He wasn't talking about pulling something off of his belt loop and handing it to him. The keys have to do with knowledge or with information. There's a knowledge that you need. When you understand the knowledge of God about giving, you can unlock stuff about finances. Amen. Amen. And so he says, I'm giving you the keys of the kingdom. We just want, we just want something to happen. We don't want to study the scriptures. We don't want to find out. There is a knowledge. We just read it in, in uh, chapter 4 of Ephesians. Uh, it says, uh, to edify the body till we all uh, come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Not knowledge about him, the knowledge of. So what he knows, he wants us to know. Amen. Is it making sense? So we can't be, uh, if we... Ignorance of kingdom keys is going to stop you from growing. If you, you can't grow, you won't change your world. And you certainly won't change your game. Stubbornness. Uh-oh. In the book of 1 Samuel, the prophet said, uh, stubbornness is as idolatry. If I'm stubborn, I have become an idol. I know what's best. Not knowing your function. And that's what you've been called to do. What's your function? What are you supposed to be doing? What's your function? Conjunction, junction. What's your function? Hooking up words and phrases and clauses. Conjunction, junction. How's that function? I'm going to get you there if you're very careful. <laughs> 
That's the only way we can learn it. They put it in a cartoon. <laughs> but there are certain things that help you function. Amen. And so we got to know what our function is. If you don't know, how do you know you're bringing pleasure to God? Well, I think, no, you got to know. When you know, you can move forward. Not making contributions. Oh, I'm not going to be a team player. I'm not going to give what God has given me. Don't put no demands on me. I'm not contributing. You have gone rogue. You're about to become a cancer. Because that's an attitude of heart, and it will poison other hearts. Yeah, ain't nobody saying that. Not speaking the truth in love. Don't join this group that run around talking about, yeah, I told them the truth. I told them the truth. you just as mean as a rattlesnake. The devil will speak the truth, but he's a liar. When you speak the truth in love, <clears throat> that don't mean you're trying to present it with some little mushy feelings. No, it's from a heart that has been tenderized Amen. by love himself. Anybody ever went through something and the Lord had to, had to deal with you and bring you through that and it humbled you and you see somebody else go through it, you don't beat them up. I, I know what it's like. But you still have to speak the truth to them, but you're doing it from a heart of love because I, I feel you. But everybody, you know, folks around right here, they, they right. Anybody right but them? Everybody else wrong? And the closest you are to me who's right is you might be halfway. <laughs> Another thing that stopped you from growing is being out of joint because of heart damage. The enemy's going to come after your heart. He's going to come to disappoint you so that you will miss your appointment. But equipping actually makes the necessary adjustments so that you won't be out of joint. It's to get you healed. So then the mature sons, say I'm a son, mature sons change the game. Matthew 11, verse 16 to 17, says, but to, the Lord's talking. He said, to what shall I liken this generation or compare it to? It's like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to their companions and saying, we played the flute for you and you did not dance. That has to do with marriage, joy, excitement. We mourn to you and you did not lament. We're acting like we're at a funeral now. We celebrate getting married, and we're into this death thing. Children playing, pretending from one extreme to the next. It's called the land of make-believe. And the Lord said, what should I compare this generation to? A bunch of children in the place where action and rulership and dominion should be taking place. They play in make-believe. Let's pretend. Let's pretend we're happy. So the church has been like children playing in the marketplaces, and we've been unaware of the business and the transfers that ought to be taking place in that, in the marketplace. We told you, well, you can see these marketplaces, business and commerce, government, Education, science and medicine, arts and entertainment, family, media, and technology. If we play in the marketplaces, we'll play at church. If we, we're oblivious to what's happening in the marketplaces, we're oblivious to what God wants to do in the church. So we come up with something else. A lot of religious activities. We don't come alive until it's time to go to church 
and do our do. Just like the guy uh, made the joke about uh, the lady that was in the choir and they started playing the song and the, the folks looked at her like, you know, you the one leading the time. Me. <laughs> and then slide all the way down in the choir while the choir was rocking and then get up to the mic just at the moment <laughs> when you're supposed to sing the lead part. Showtime. But the truth is, that person's assignment, they might be able to sing, and that's fine, but their assignment is in government. And that's where the good work that they're supposed to be doing is, but they never got there because they don't believe that they could do such a thing. So that potential never comes out. But they're expecting God to give them this great big reward for that world that they've, they've been assigned to, but they only did this. I want you to think. Amen. Amen. So we've been playing the wrong games in these spheres of influence. Instead of playing, God wants us to be ruling. The game, if we can use that term that you're supposed to be playing, is dominating. Go back and read Genesis chapter 1, 26 through 28. God said, let us make man in our image and likeness and let them have, let them sit in the marketplace and play like they're getting married and play like they're sad. Dominion. That's rulership. Amen. Because, see, he never, God never changed his, 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 uh, his, his will for man. Amen. 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 So, there are people in these places, in the marketplaces, but so is wealth. And if you'll seek the king first, he'll show you how to take your marketplace. 1 Corinthians 13, 11. When I was a child, I, I, and I, but when I became, when I became a man, when I matured, I put away childish things. Look at the childish things. The child first speaks. Then they understand. Then they think. Actually, if you, you study this, we, 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 we'd like to lift scriptures up out of their the context, but Paul was talking about himself. It goes back into Acts where Stephen got stoned. Paul was the one consenting to it. He's the one that had the brother killed. And he said, I was acting like a child. I'm spiritually a kid. So I spoke like one. I understood like one. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things or childish ways. You think first. You get an understanding. And, and this word understand has to do with mental disposition, sentiments, and opinions. Stop voicing your opinion all the time. Because you tell it off, I ain't mature. <laughs> and my other opinion is, you should have kept the first one. I, you know, <laughs> we laughing at that uh, because, I mean, it's a little funny, but here's the, the, the problem with it. You will cross a line and challenge authority because you're used to giving your opinion. 
these folk around, they, they let the children come up, you know, children talking. Uh, they act like they're grown. No, they're a child, and you need to know it. The problem is you're grown, but you're still a child, and you're raising one. And you think that you're grown, and you can identify grown. No, you are nursing rebellion. You are nursing a human being and, and, and causing them to grow up to where they will challenge authority because they think they're on the same status. Somebody's child get up in a grown folks face, damn, I'm not going to hold it. It's all out of order. You don't have to even be brought up that way. You just something on the inside that lets you know, there's something wrong with that. Well, how are we going to change these marketplaces and we haven't grown up? We'll say whatever. Oh, Lord. So when we learn to live by the leading of the Spirit of God through the Word of God, we are then called sons or mature ones. And then all of creation is looking for you. Yeah. Romans 8, 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. But I love this, Romans 8, 19. This is actually out to amplify it. It says, for even the whole creation, talking about these marketplaces, everything created waits expectantly and longs earnestly for God's sons to be made known waits for the revealing, the disclosing of their sonship. You didn't know you were that important, did you? Everything God created is looking for you. You go and read the rest of Romans chapter 8. Right after that, it says that the creation was made subject because of what Adam did. But God created all, everything to be under man's rulership. So the, the financial marketplace is waiting for the sons of God to get in a place so that I can respond to you the way I was created. It cannot get unlocked if you're not where you're supposed to be. We're out right here scratching. Oh, Lord, come on, Lord. My bill's due on Tuesday. God, it's Monday evening about 8 o'clock p.m. I need you to move, God, because they're going to be showing up by 7 in the morning. Come on, Jesus. Here's your humble servant, knee bent and body bowed. Oh, oh Lord. We're trying to get him to move. And we don't understand the principles of the kingdom. We're begging for what he's already given to us. It's too much. So, your world is waiting on you to be revealed. You're assigned to one of those spheres of influences. Are you going to let somebody keep you from where you've been assigned? Because it might look like you might be alone. Look how y'all looking. We feel like we got to have folks with us. And then the enemy will stir up people to put their mouth on you. Oh, 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 you better than everybody now. Oh, you can't be with the family no more. Ain't nobody in the family ever act like that. Ain't nobody in the family ever had nothing like that, tried to do nothing like that. What makes you think you... Get yourself on back in there and be like the rest of us. If you do this, you're going to be alone. Oh, 
I got to have me a man. I got to have me a woman. Now, God, when I get all this situated, then me and you can talk. The talk won't ever happen because you told him this situation comes before him. If you take the number one out of his position, math, money, everything goes out the window. Nothing comes before number one. And I know what you're saying. Zero comes before number one. Zero is not a number. It's not. Zero comes after nine when you add the one to it. <laughs> uh, you can't get me. God is number one. And we have to make him number one in our life. Then stuff starts flowing because now you got the order. Okay. Things you need to be effective in the game. Everybody say, I got to change the game. Well, say this, say this. I'm a game changer and a climate shifter. Tell your neighbor. So things you need to be effective in the game, one, you need to heart of the ideal servant. It actually means sons, hear me, sons who serve their father's wishes. That's his heart. He served the father's wishes. He only lived to do what the father wanted. That's his heart, and that's what he's reproducing in us. You got to have the character of the kingdom. If you don't have the character of the kingdom, you'll become a character. You got to have love and compassion. The love of God is the rule or the governing law of the kingdom. It's the royal law. Why do you say royal law? Because we're kings. He's a king, the king, and we're in his kingdom. You got to have diligence and patience. Amen. Stop trying to hear them get it done yesterday. Good food needs to take a moment to cook. We don't want to have no pink chicken scares. You fried it fast, but on the inside it's pink. And you want us to eat it. Everybody just pinching off the skin. You know, that coating is gone. How come you eat the chicken? You don't want to eat it because it's bleeding. That chicken ain't bleeding. Yes, it is, Mama. See, look at that right there. I don't want to eat that. <laughs> Diligence means to be prompt and earnest and business like. The work you're called to do, make it your business. Wisdom and understanding. You can't be a dummy in this. You got to know how God operates and how he thinks. And then you got to have skill and artistry. You got to be the best at what you do. People used to tell us, I know y'all small, and, uh, but y'all, you know, one day y'all going to be big and y'all going to be doing this and that and so forth and so on. I say, look, we might be small, but we very good at what we do. You don't wait till you get there and then I'm going to do. No, I'm the best there is now. Amen. When you're in a tight place, when you're in a place where everything ain't working, that's when you hone those skills. You learn how to seek God. You learn how to pray. You learn how to press past stuff. Amen. We saw some miraculous stuff happening in that storefront. It wasn't a storefront. It was our hot pursuit of the king. A man of God walked in there one day just during the daytime. I, we were talking, and he said, it feels good in here. And I started smiling. He said, "It's a lot of prayer going on here. I didn't say nothing. Those that are discerning. They know exactly what's been happening. 
I can come to your house and tell you what's going on. Uh, anybody want to invite me over? Okay. <laughs> to be effective in the game that you're called to be effective in, you got to have ever-increasing excellence. What was excellent in 94 ain't going to cut it. You got to always be improving. Spirit of God tell you, do this, do it. Amen. Amen. Somebody got to tell you to do what you know you ought to do. You off the grid. Excellence is on God's standard chart. And what he told me was, it's the lowest that I go. If we're, our lives are not excellent, we're not even on his standard chart. Then you got to be a good person who's full of the Holy Ghost and full of faith. Stop trying to ride somebody else's faith. Write this down. I cannot live beyond my thinking. You can't live beyond your thinking. So that's why he's going to deal with you about kingdom character. So you can learn to think on the level of the kingdom. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. If you don't see yourself as a game changer, if you don't see yourself as having been given uh, the good life, you'll settle for anything less than the good life. And you'll charge God in your heart that he got picks and chooses. He'll bless this one and won't bless me. That's not God. That's that little frame you live in. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, give the Lord a hand of praise. Thank you for joining us for the heart of a servant an outreach ministry of Canaan Christian Center in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. If you are in the Pine Bluff area, we'd love for you to join us on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. for our United Prayer on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. and for our midweek service on Wednesday night at 7. We would also like to give a special thank you to all of our covenant partners. If you are interested in becoming a covenant partner, please visit our website or send us an email. We are Canaan Christian Center, praying that you have the heart of the ideal servant.